is he trips and lets it fly all over the place. Flubber! Here he is! Eat up, you little worm! The two ants are angry, of course, because that's the one note they've been given. When they come across an amazing discovery. Look! A peach! There, on that branch! Why, that old tree's never had so much as a blossom on it, let alone a... Well, I'll be blowed. I'm good. But the peach apparently has the power to keep on growing until it finally transforms into Garfield's anus. The ants, of course, seize the opportunity to make a buck off of this and start charging money for people to see it. Oh, Spongebob. <laughs> It's like someone put clown makeup on the Crypt Keeper. And don't even think of going near our peach. Remember, they never did catch that rhino. So while James is out doing, what else? Work, 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 work! He comes across one last piece of nuclear snot that allows him to climb inside the peach and apparently change his appearance. <laughs> <It's trouble! laughs> so it turns out the glowing turtle semen made a bunch of the bugs bigger and able to talk. And it turns out that they all coincidentally want to go to New York. But they have to hurry fast, or else the two evil aunts will come across them. Yoo-hoo! Where are you, boy? I think I hear a rhino out here! Boy, they really like playing that rhino card, don't they? For something that was vaguely explained in a millisecond, they sure do bring it up a lot. Timber. Oh, hey, great! The movie suddenly turned into Marble Madness! So the peach rolls out to the Atlantic Ocean, where it appears all they have to do is ride it all the way to New York City. I'll get us there! You? Sure! I sailed all the five seas! But they have to look out for a giant mechanical shark ship! Oh, don't act like you've never seen one. Floats to the surface and tries to catch them. We do our hunting and farming here. The sea supplies all my wants. But James thinks up a pretty creative idea by roping all the seagulls he can find and using them to fly away. My, 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 so as they start eating part of the peach because they're hungry, all the bugs decide to... I've eaten many strange and scrumptious dishes in my time. <sighs> really? We're singing a song about eating the goddamn peach? These foods are rare beyond comparing some right out of reach. No, man. But there's no doubt I'd go without a million plates of each. I mean... Not that I have a problem with them singing about this at all! I'm sure this does a great deal to further the story and give insight into the characters. I'm just a little curious what other similar musical numbers they turned down to fit this one in. Such important songs like The Sky is Blue, My Tongue is in My Mouth, Butts Make Poo, and God knows what else. God, can you imagine what this movie would be like without these essential Randy Newman songs? No, but God, I'm trying to! So as the spider starts to tuck James to sleep, or is she planning to eat him? He finds out that she much prefers a life of being alone. I think it's much nicer to have friends, don't you? I would not know. They would be your friends too. The others, I mean, if you just let them. No, it is in their nature to have fear of me. This I cannot change. Well, wait, when in any of the previous scenes did it indicate that they were afraid of her? Or that she kept her distance? Or hell, even that she was quiet? She interacts with them, dances with them. She even thinks them a Randy thong. So where's this sudden loner story arc coming from? Now to sleep. You have had a very tired making day. By the way, if I am sucking your brains out in the middle of the night, I apologize. <sighs> so James goes to sleep and has a dream that he's... in Monty Python's Flying Circus. You can't crawl away from us! Now, of course.
course that scene was necessary because it needed to show that James is afraid of a giant rhinoceros that killed his parents. See, I'm glad that they had this scene in the movie because I never would have put together that James was afraid of a giant rhinoceros that killed his parents! Heck, I'm surprised Randy Newman didn't write a song about that! Rhinos, they scare little boys. Fascinating parents don't bring them much joy, it's Randy. But it turns out the centipede led them in the wrong direction, and now they're in the Antarctic. So they go underwater to see if they can find a compass to lead them in the right direction. They come across several pirate ships, including one that has the statues of his ants in front of it. I don't get it. When they suddenly come across skeleton pirates, one of them played by Jack Skellington. Was this an incredibly clever cameo? Or was Henry Selleck just too cheap to make other puppets? Either way, it's pretty cool. Listen, fellas, I got a long history of back problems. Now, tell me what you know about Christmas Land. <laughs> but James and the spider come to save him, just making up the law of underwater physics as they go, and manage to get the compass. <laughs> and since I am dead, I can take off my head. Oh, thank goodness, you're all right. Mr. Centipede. Would you please do us the honor of navigating us out of this icebox? Seeing how you got us into this icebox. You said it, Mr. Grasshopper. So just as you're wondering if those birds ever need to eat or sleep, we see James come across a rather touching musical moment. nice. That's a very genuine moment. That's an enchanted musical scene that doesn't need to succumb to the typical Randy Newman formula. Take a little time. Just look at where we are. No man! We come very, very far together. Love is the strangest thing. Love no, don't dance with her. It is in your nature to have fear of her. Love By the way, if you're wondering what all of those things flying around in the background are, guess what? Never explain. But that's not a bad thing, no! It makes about as much sense as, oh, I don't know, an unexplained giant rhinoceros killing some middle-aged people! But that works! In a way I can't possibly explain at all, it still works, it still works! So just when it looks like they finally made it to their destination, they come across a rather unfriendly visitor. Look out, a rhino? Try looking at it another way! You're never the so the rhino zaps the birds, allowing the peach to fall. No! Rhinos, they scare little boys. Actually, it lands on top of the Empire State Building, right dab in the middle of New York. And just what exactly was that giant rhino that James said was only a bunch of smoke and noise? I don't know! I don't know! All that build up and they never explain what he was running from that whole time! And that's... just... FINE! So after James changes back to his normal self, the ants come in and try to take back what they claim is rightfully theirs. But James isn't gonna have any of that. This is all something he dreamed up. Well, maybe it started that way, as a dream. But doesn't everything? Those buildings, these lights, this whole city. Somebody had to dream about it first, and maybe that's what I did. I dreamed about coming here, but then I did it. You're going home with us. No, not this time. I flew in a giant peach across the ocean. I landed on top of the tallest building in the world. I made it! I'm not the one who's nothing, you are! How dare you speak to us this way! Oh. Ah. Jesus, ladies! <laughs> Peachy! 
But it turns out the bugs come in to save the day. The city can't believe their eyes. So they pull the two ants up and wrap them up in web. No doubt suffocating them to death. I love how the police officer all this time is like, yeah, I'm gonna allow this. So everybody brings out the confetti they've been holding on to for God knows what reason, and James becomes a hero telling all the kids on the block his tale. James, dinner is ready. And then, an exciting, unexplained anti-climax with a rhino. Man, that's James and the Giant Peach. It's fantastic, glorious, stupendous! But if I was to find some fault with it... Just hear me out! Just hear me out! I would say that while the film is creative, it's also pretty clumsy. A lot of stuff doesn't add up, a lot of scenes go nowhere, the songs are pretty forgettable, and the live-action stuff is surprisingly more over-the-top than the animated stuff. What they changed from the book actually raises more questions than it does simplify things, which results in it being both weird and confusing. But with that said, the animation is very good. Designs are a lot of fun, and even things like those cheesy sets actually do have sort of a strange charm to them. You also have to give the film credit that it didn't need to resort to pop cultural references, as a lot of anime films were doing at that time. It was at least trying to tell a timeless story. So is it for me? No. But I can see why it has an audience. The stuff that's neat is still pretty neat. And there's a lot of things in the movie that can be considered pretty impressive. So I guess I can't really fault people for enjoying something that does give way to a lot of imaginative scenarios. It may be flawed, but I think we all know that you're gonna get a great big dose of something really creative. And that's all I gotta say about that. There. Have I restored anything in your guys' eyes? He says he didn't like the movie! Kill him! That's what my